Hey guys, it's Ross Scott, and on the Space Coach today, I'm going to be reviewing this. Frankenstein and Bad Bad by Ahmed Sadawi. Thoroughly enjoyed this. I will just read the back of it for you. A satirical reimagining of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. From the rubble-strewn streets of Baghdad, Hadi collects body parts from the dead, which he stitches together to form a corpse. He claims he does it to force the government to recognise the parts as real people and give them a proper burial. But when the corpse goes missing, a wave of eerie murders sweeps across the city and reports stream in of a horrendous-looking, flesh-eating monster that cannot be killed. At first it's the guilty he attacks, but soon it's anyone who crosses his path. Frankenstein and Baghdad brilliantly captures the horror and black humour of a city at war. Uh, that's a very basic description of what happens in the book. Um, there's a lot more to it. Basically, one of the main characters is called Alishva, and she's an old um, Christian lady, um, I think Syrian Christian Turks, living in Baghdad. And her son died many, many years ago, probably during the war with Iraq, and all the rest of her family have moved away. Um, but she keeps holding out hope that her son will return one day and she prays to the icon of her saint uh, to return him to her. So anyway, there's a big car bomb explosion outside a hotel. Loads of people are killed, including a security guard who, um, so his soul essentially kind of gets trapped by this monster that the guy is building, stitching together. And he's not really intending the guy for that to have come back to life, but somehow... It does. And this guy, I think his name is Daniel, uh, he is the animating force behind it. But um, his parts wear out and they rot, and so he has to keep replacing them, and he replaces them from the guilty. So he's killing the guilty and criminals, all that stuff, and replacing whichever bits need replacing. But then he's not sure if um, he's doing it for that reason, or because if he doesn't do it, then um, everything will fall apart and he will essentially die. And he won't have fulfilled the promise to revenge himself on everyone who has been killed by the people uh, who make up the part. It's a bit confusing at times as to exactly what his motivations are. And then it's like, well, you know, or you could just die. It's like, not replace yourself. And that will also have the effect of you falling apart. Yeah, but it's interesting. Um, there's a, quite a bit about Arabic culture, specifically Baghdadi culture in there. And I did find, um, having read this book previously, Imperial Life and the Emerald City, it's all about the green zone, the occupation of Iraq by the US back in the 2000s, to be very useful. Just going into like, the details on like the military and the police and the nature of the society and the corruption and all of that. Uh, so that was a useful backstop, but you don't need to read that to have read this. So, but it, basically it follows the regular Frankenstein story. He starts off just trying to kill the guilty, but he ends up having to kill the innocent because he needs the parts. And then starts rationalising, well, they would have been guilty of something eventually anyway, and all that sort of stuff. But this, it is interesting. Um, to be honest, the Frankenstein parts... Uh, isn't the major part of it. It just follows like the side characters who um, come uh, like various like, like reporters and uh, the old lady and there's like an estate agent and there's a guy who owns a junk shop and everyone owns a coffee shop, someone owns a hotel, all that sort of stuff. All the locals basically and they're all intertwined. Um, but yes, I did thoroughly enjoy it. It was very interesting. Um, I'm trying to think what else there was about it. Oh yes, um, there's this department, um, I think they just call it the tracking department, and it's made up of um, former Bathists that have not been purged or de-Bathicized, de whatever the expression was. So they're just from the old regime, and they're monitoring basically all the supernatural stuff that is going on, trying to head off car bombs, murders, kidnappings, all that sort of stuff. And when they stumble across the creature, um, there's various sects form around them. There's at least three different sects. And one of them thinks he's like the number one Iraqi citizen because he's a representation of all Iraq because he's made up of different parts. Others worship him as a god and you must not look at him and all that sort of stuff. And I can't remember what the third one was. But yeah, his presence causes problems <laughs> for everyone. But it is thoroughly enjoyable. Um, I picked this up in the charity shop for about two quid. Um, which is a bargain because I probably wouldn't pay full price for it. But yeah, it's worth a whirl if you come across it. Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadawi. What does that say? It was shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize last year in 2018. So yes, it is quite a literary book, 
but um, often literary books are unreadable to me anyway. This one isn't. It's easy enough to read and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I always enjoy another retelling of the Frankenstein story. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or suggestion for a content topic you'd like to see discussed or like the video.